Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Our topic to today is spondylolysis and spondylolysis. Spondylolysis is defined as a defect in the pars interarticularis, whereas spondylolysis means slippage of the vertebra in the relation of the adjacent one. Spondylolysis can occur as a complication of spondylolysis, or let's say as a sequel of spondylolysis, due to the loss of posterior stabilizing factors. It is then referred to ismic spondylolysis and should, be, should not be confused with other forms of spondylolysis, such as the degenerative one. The famous classification by Wills, Newman, and McNabb classifies spondylolysis into five types. One, is plastic. Second, the ismic, which is our topic today. The, the ismus has, may, might be broken, elongated, and with or with an acute fracture of the pars. The third type is a degenerative type. The fourth type is a traumatic, where the fractures are, can occur anywhere except in the pars. And of course, we have the pathological type. The, the, the spinal deformity study group had a classification for, spon for spondylolysis into six types. These types depend on the, the degree of slip and its uh, uh, affection of the sagittal balance of the patient. L5 spinal spondylolysis can be either a low grade, which is the first three types, with the pelvic incidence either below 45, between 45 and 60, and or and or on above 60. The, the, the high grade can be either a with a balanced pelvis or a retroverted pelvis, either with a balanced spine or an unbalanced spine. The sagittal balance, it reflects the shape of the spine that allows it to keep the standing position with the most, the littlest muscle effort. Pelvic incidence equals the pelvic tilt and the, plus the sickness flow. Uh, and of course, we have the lumbar lordosis. These are the four important parameters in the sagittal balance. The pelvic incidence correspond to the angle between the perpendicular to the upper S1 level passing through its center and the line connecting this point to the axis of the femoral head. Sickness slope is the angle between a line tangent to the upper S1 end plate and horizontal line. The pelvic tilt is the angle between the vertical and the line connecting the center of the sacral end plate to the axis of the femoral head. The lumbar doses, which is measured with the, with the famous, famous Cobb's angle, which is between the superior end plates of L1 and S1. Spinopelvic alignment changes with the grade of lytic spondylolysis. The greater the grade of slip, the greater the value of the pelvic incidence and pelvic tilt. These are the three compensatory mechanisms to allow to compensate for the change in the, in the pelvic tilt and the pelvic incidence, either by increasing the lumbar doses, which can be seen in the patient with lytic spondylolysis. When the lumbar doses reaches its maximum, pelvic retroversion starts to occur. And the third mechanism is by increasing the hip extension, so, the, so it allows to compensate for the sagittal balance. Management of spondylolysis. We have to first diagnose it. Diagnosis starts by the clinical picture. Uh, it can be either asymptomatic or with pain. Pain I can be either a back pain or a leg pain or both. The different signs are uh, spasm, muscle spasm, tenderness, palpable step off, which in cases of lytic spondylolysis will be at the, between the level at the, at the level of higher than the level of the slip, and of course the abnormal gait, which may result from the hamstring tightness. Radiological finding by plain X-ray, we have the inverted Napoleon's hat sign. We have the Scotty dog, and of course we have the famous dynamic views, which allow us to uh, assess the amount of instability. CT scan is typically used because of its excellent 
um, uh, manifestation or excellent exposure of bony architecture. MRI, which is less invasive, similar to CT, but without the associated ionizing radiation. MRI also demonstrates associated spondylolisthesis, nerve root entrapment, disc degeneration, and herniation, which, is, which can be important if we decide to fuse the patient, and which might, might occur in levels other than the level of spondylolisthesis. The white canal sign, we have the canal at the level of the, 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 the spaced body, which is wider than usual because the posterior elements are left behind. The treatment, we have the conservative treatment, which start by rest, activity restriction, bracing, medical treatment in the form of analgesics, muscle relaxant. We can use neurotonics in case of nerve entrapment. Then when the patient uh, is rested enough, we can start by doing physiotherapy to rehabilitate the muscles and maybe stretch the shorter or the hamstring tight, the tight hamstrings. We can resort to epidural injection of the medical treatment was not sufficient. The operative treatment indication for it are patients with a slip more than 50%, patients with documented progression of a slip between 25 and 50%, regardless of the symptoms, progressive or persistent neurological symptoms, mechanical back or leg symptoms unresponsive to physical therapy, persistent posture or gait abnormality unresolved by physical therapy, and, and failed conservative measure between 6 and 12 months. The different techniques of fusion consist of having either posterolateral fusion, which by putting bone graft in the lateral gutter between the end and transverse space, and using a, a pedicle screw instrumentation with, with it. We have the interbody fusion, which can either be a posterior interbody fusion, where putting the cage will need to uh, do a, a significant amount of retraction for the neural elements, because in this technique, we don't take out the powers and the, and the facets. The transforaminal uh, interbody fusion is similar to the cliff, but with after taking out the pars and the facet, we are allowed. We, we can put the cage without doing a very significant uh, retraction of the neural elements. Which with, with this we can avoid any neural problems either by having a deficit or even the better what we have we call the better root syndrome. How to evaluate the patient? We can evaluate him either clinically or radiologically. Clinically, you can use the Oswestry Disability Index or the VAS uh, uh, score for back and leg symptoms. This should be done preoperatively, immediate postoperative, and at three, six, and 12 months postoperative. The radiological outcome, we have to assess the pelvic parameters, which are the four important ones. The preoperative can be, it can be done also preoperatively, immediate postoperative at 12 months, and also you have to assess the fusion at 6 and 12 months postoperative. The Oswestry Disability Index, this is a questionnaire designed to assess how much back pain affects the patient's ability to function in everyday life. Ten sections are included, each assigned a score from 0 to 5 points, and the final sum is calculated with a maximum score of 50. And uh, this is the formula how to uh, make the score in a, in a percentage form. The visual analog score for what we call the VAS for the back and leg pain. VAS is, is a unidimensional objective measure of pain intensity formed by a horizontal line of fixed length, usually 10 centimeters, the ends are defined as the extreme limits of the parameter to be measured. Here is the pain, which is the pain, uh, oriented from the left, which is the best condition, where, where or no pain, to the right, which is the worst or the most, the maximum pain possible. The radiological thumb, we will have to measure the pelvic parameters. X-ray was done at post-operative one, three, at six, and 12 months. Spinal pelvic balance, pre and post operative values for the pelvic incidence and pelvic tilt, and the lumbar low doses. 
the amount of road contouring depends on the amount and the type of the native lumbar dose of the patient. A patient with a high pelvic incident and a pronounced lumbar dose requires an important road contouring. The lumbar doses or the contouring of the rod is the, is the parameter in our hands to uh, try to uh, correct or achieve a good sagittal balance. Hyperordotic lumbosacral fusion with hyperextension of the segment above the instrumentation with the failure to restore a good sagittal balance lead to chronic back pain and early degenerative changes at the adjacent level. So one of the important things for the adjacent level uh, uh, stability or uh, protection is to achieve a good sagittal balance or proper sagittal balance. Uh, how to assess the fusion? Here we have the Brankton and Steffi classification for fusion, which is a bit, uh, uh, classifies the fusion into five grades radiographically, either by having from one to where there is an obvious pseudoarthrosis to five, where there is an obvious radiographic fusion. Thank you.